This video reviews why welders love the arc starts they get with the ESOB Precision Master Gas Saver. They rightfully reject other gas surge control devices. In a published article, the author states the average MIG welder uses from three to five times the amount of MIG shielding gas they should. The gas surge at the weld start is mentioned as a major cause. When welding, the pressure in the gas delivery hose varies from 3 to 7 psi. When welding stops, the pressure increases to the regulator pressure, which could be up to 80 psi. This stores up to 7 times the amount of gas as the physical hose volume. The stored gas blasts out of the MIG gun nozzle when welding starts. The high gas surge not only wastes considerable gas, in some applications over half the gas used is wasted, the high gas surge at the weld start pulls air into the gas stream, creating excess spatter and possibly internal porosity. Before we discuss how the patented ESOB Precision Master Gas Saver can save money and improve weld starts, we'll review some basics of shielding gas flow. Just how much gas flow causes problems? The Welding Institute in England published an article that defined that level. With a typical 5 8 inch ID nozzle, about 50 CFH is all that can be used without causing air to be pulled into the gas stream. But welders say they need more flow because of drafts. Testing a controlled amount of draft showed 65 CFH caused more internal porosity than 45 CFH, validating the Welding Institute's report. If a draft is over 4 to 5 miles an hour, use a windbreak. Although excess gas flow rate at the start must be avoided, some extra gas is needed to purge the weld area. Stauffer in a 1982 patent defined the need to purge the torch nozzle and weld start area of air. He added a gas storage device to his apparatus to provide that extra start gas. We'll discuss shortly why some devices cause a lack of sufficient start gas. The patented ESOB Precision Master Gas Saver is simple to use and has no moving parts or knobs to set or control at the welder wire feed end. This is a picture of the system packaged on a display card. This schematic shows the key elements of the gas holes assembly. An orifice controls the steady state flow entering the device and the wire feeder. A section of large diameter hose stores sufficient gas when welding stops to properly purge the weld start area and torch parts when welding begins again. A peak flow orifice at the feeder end limits the start flow rate, avoiding excess turbulence. Reviewing some of the devices that have been tried and rejected over the years in attempt to solve the surge flow problem. Orifices have been used and can be implemented two ways both create problems. If a small orifice is used to set flow, there is lack of sufficient start gas. Welders may drill them out or remove them and complain about lack of gas. This is often not because they need more steady state flow, just more gas at the weld start. The second way orifices are used is to employ a large size just to limit start flow rate. This can be effective to improve weld start quality if the size is properly selected, which it often is not, and the gas flow set at the cylinder or pipeline. However, this gives a false sense of gas savings. If a pressure gauge is placed in the gas delivery hose, it will be seen to still rise when welding stops and then lower to perhaps 5 to 10 psi when gas is flowing again. It may save a small amount of gas, but most of the waste occurs as shown in this graph. It just takes several seconds to occur. Realizing that only 3 to 8 psi are usually needed to flow the desired amount of gas, some have tried an approach of using low pressure and avoid the starting gas surge. However, when spatter builds in the nozzle, gas diffuser, where the small gas passage in the torch is restricted with bends or debris from the wire since most torches use the wire conduit as a gas passage, pressures vary and flows can change. 
The engineers that invented and developed the MIG process knew of the possible flow restrictions and used a principle called choke flow to automatically keep preset flow rates constant. Without going into the math, choke flow requires a minimum pressure upstream of the flow control device of 25 psi. That is why most quality flow controls operate from 25 to 80 psi, like those shown here. The test results shown here were made to compare flow with a conventional flow meter in the upper picture with a low pressure device sold to reduce surge bottom picture. Flows were both initially set at 31 CFH, as noted in the green numbers. The restrictions were then added and removed to simulate what occurs in production. Note with the 25 PSI conventional flow control system, the flow remained at the preset level of 31 CFH. With a low pressure device with no changes in flow setting, the flow varied from 16 to 37 CFH, a very wide range. This is just not acceptable and outside most production control ranges. Of interest, the flow calibrated pressure gauge on the low pressure surge control device read the preset 31 CFH for all flows since the pressure did not change. The restrictions just changed the flow. No indication of that change was evident on the meter. Fabricators are sometimes reluctant to try our ESOP gas saver system because they tried and discarded other devices. Here are three who relayed their story. All three purchased a low pressure surge device, the same one shown in the previous tests. The first, an automotive OEM, discarded 32 units after a short time because flows varied with the same gauge reading and they saw poorer starts. The second solved the nagging porosity problem by removing this same system. The third, a bar joist manufacturer, discarded 50 of these units because of flow variations and welder setting high flow trying to compensate for the lack of sufficient start gas. Perhaps your welders rejected some of these devices. We'll show why our ESOB patented Precision Master gas saver avoids any of these problems and why welders appreciate its weld start benefits. Following are the benefits of the ESOB gas saver. Pressures are maintained above 25 psi, just as the engineers that developed the process knew they should be. Preset flow is maintained when the inevitable restrictions occur. A sufficient amount of extra start gas is quickly supplied to purge the weld start area and torch parts. Compared to a conventional gas supply system, the amount of wasted gas at the start is reduced 85 to over 90%. This can reduce gas use by 40 to 50 percent or more depending on the existing hose lengths, pressures, and number of starts. Peak flow at the start is limited to the amount that avoids excess turbulence. In addition, the maximum flow deliverable is in the range of 70 CFH, which is shown is above what it should, what should be used. Standard flow meters can flow 125 to 150 CFH with an open valve and the ball pinned to the top. The ESOP Precision Master gas saver is easy to install and use. For cylinders, purchase a kit with a proper regulator. There's one for argon gas mixtures and one for CO2. Install the gas saver hose assembly at the feeder and just set regulator pressure according to the supplied chart. For pipeline gas supply, purchase the kit with a pipeline regulator. It has a quarter NPT inlet. Install a gas saver hose assembly and again set regulator pressure according to the chart. An option for pipeline use, if the gas pressure remains constant in the pipeline, is to purchase only the gas saver hose assembly. Set the pipeline pressure for the desired flow for the chart. Gas flow is set by adjusting pressure in the gas hose either from a regulator on a cylinder or the gas pipeline pressure. For example, if using argon CO2 shielding and setting the pressure at 35 psi provides 34 CFH flow. Note flow can be set somewhat in excess of that desired 
but not nearly as high as with a standard flow meter. For more information, see www.esabna.com and ask for literature ARC 23257. Thank you.